Many of us are time crunched. We've got commitments that mean that we just don't get as much opportunity as we'd like to be able to ride our bikes, which then has a knock-on effect because it means that we fear that we can't get as fit as we would like for the time that we do have to be able to ride our bikes. But worry no more. There are tricks and tips that you can use that means that you can get the most out of the time that you do have available and still get screaming fit. Picture this scene, it's 6 a.m., you've got work to get to soon. Perhaps you've got kids, they're not up yet, but they will be soon. You've got just a few precious minutes to get something done. Let's face it, if you're time crunched, the first point is that you need as few barriers as possible between you, your time, and your training. You've heard us say many times before that indoor training gives you the biggest bang for your buck, and that is absolutely true. And having a bike set up ready to go, if you can do, is definitely the way forward. As you can see, what bike have sent us an atom for us to make this video with, and it's looking very cool, I think you'll agree, in Hank's bachelor pad. Oh yes. Now, what bike have been in the indoor training game longer than almost anyone and are definitely some of the experts when it comes to what all types of cyclists need to perform at their best, time crunch cyclists included. So as well as giving you some tips and tricks in this video that we've picked up over the years, we've also been talking to one of their consultants, Dr. Jamie Pringle, who's a top exercise physiologist. Plus, we have a little extra help from GCN Science Glasses. Now, although you can train outside on limited time, the fact is indoor training definitely allows you to do more training in a shorter period of time. There is no time spent waiting to get onto roads that allow you to do hard riding. There's no waiting around at traffic lights and there's no running out of climb when you've still got 30 seconds of interval to go. Jamie, great uh, to have you join us today. Really interested to know your thoughts on time crunch training and specifically the science behind it. I mean, is the research that can shed some light on, on how to get the most out of uh, time crunch training? With the indoor bike and using something like the Watt bike, you've got the opportunity there to achieve that time in those higher power zones with less cost. So without the volatility of power up and down either side of the target that you might get out on the road. So you might be able to then achieve that same stimulus, that same time of the higher intensities, but less of the negative cost and the lingering fatigue. So you're getting potentially more efficient bang for your buck, not just that bang for the buck. So if you can invest in some good indoor equipment with a particular focus on power measurement. That is a big factor on this Watt bike. It's super accurate and it also allows you to analyze in more detail other things like your pedal stroke as well. Now, it's not essential to monitor training. Keeping a training log and then analyzing what data you can gather is also really effective, but you lose some of that pinpoint accuracy. So just how fit can you get on limited time? Well, recent research from Coakley and Passfield showed that there was no statistically significant difference between the rates of improvement of three groups of cyclists. One group who'd been doing 16 hours a week focusing on sweet spot training, one group who'd been doing just three hours a week focusing on high intensity interval training, and one group that had done a mix of both, which is remarkable. Slightly counterintuitive, but also undeniably good news for the time crunch cyclist. So we know that this idea of getting the biggest bang for your buck has been the goal of many individuals for a long time and therefore it's well documented and well researched, which is excellent news for us. Now one of the things that I found really interesting about talking to Jamie was this concept of accumulating time above a certain threshold in our workout. So if you imagine your high intensity training session, it's accumulating intensity that would perhaps normally leave you to fatigue, that is what is gonna give you the biggest gains in your fitness. And so by focusing on shorter sessions that are harder, you can progress your fitness more quickly. So how do you get the most out of these short sessions then? One aim could be to try and get the most amount of work done at higher powers as possible. And researchers at the University of Kent found a neat trick. They showed that if you vary the intensity 
of hard intervals, you can actually get more work done at higher powers than if those intervals were steady state. So during a five minute hard interval, if you do three 30 second surges, at the end of the session where you've done six of them, it won't have felt any harder. Yeah. Now, sessions like this can be quite complicated to follow, so time crunch trainers use all the equipment you have at your disposal. If your indoor training setup allows you to set it so that it keeps you to prescribed powers, definitely use it. On this Watt bike, I can do exactly that, so all I have to do is pedal and I'll get the session done perfectly. Now erg mode on a smart trainer will also do a similar thing and what it means is that there's also less mental cost to this type of training as well which on an individual session might not be super important but over time definitely will. Now it feels like we might be getting a bit ahead of ourselves here. Second in importance only to removing the barriers to training is to set yourself a goal. Now this doesn't mean become world champion because you've got no control over that. No, we need to get serious. Set goals you can actually work towards, like power targets, and make them relevant to your ultimate aim, like becoming world champion. Analyze, what do you need to get there? Probably an amazing sprint, so let's work on that. Probably fantastic two to four minute power so you can make that final breakaway. Let's focus on that too. And what if your goal is not to become world champion, but to complete a mountainous sportif? Well, you can use exactly the same principle there as well. Break it down. What are the areas that you can improve? Focus on them and not on things that don't count. Now, as an added bonus, most of us humans tend to be quite goal-driven people. So much so, in fact, that Strava say that from their data, they can see that frequency of uploads doubles in the 30 days after someone sets themselves a goal. Have they suddenly got more time to train? Probably not. Have they been motivated to find more time to train? Perhaps. So we've got our quantifiable targets. Using something like power is ideal because it's consistent and it also allows us to gauge our progress from regular consistent efforts. So if, for example, you are looking at improving your 20 minute power, knowing how much power you can sustain and then just trying to nudge that amount forward each time you come back to that session is a great way of seeing real tangible improvements. Use the data that you have at your fingertips. This is like a science lab. We've got clinical accurate power measurement combined with your heart rate data and also good old perception of effort. And this isn't just the preserve of those with access to the best equipment. If you've got a standard indoor trainer and a speed sensor, you too can still get an idea of how you're improving over time. And by working towards specific targets, you remove the reliance on fitness tests, which is good because they're really unpleasant as well as not being a very good use of time. So instead, if you're aware of what your body is doing and how it's responding on individual sessions as well as over time, you can get a really good idea of what training is working and what might not be quite so effective. Now, one common question is how best you use the time that you have available. Do you do two longer rides per week or do you do more frequent, shorter sessions? Well, Science suggests that more frequent, shorter sessions is the way to go. And in fact, research just in shows that sprint snacks might be the way to go. Oh yes, this is where you effectively accumulate training effort over the course of a day. You jump on your bike, you do a bit, jump back off, have a Zoom call, jump back on again, do a little bit more. And actually it might be almost as effective as doing it all in one hit. And it doesn't just have to be sprint stacks. Steady snacks might also be a thing where you can accumulate steady state riding at lower intensities and get almost as much muscle adaptation as if you did it in one hit. Now, you do have to be careful though, more high intensity interval training work is not necessarily better, as Dr. Pringle points out. I think you should avoid mullowing yourself every time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that no pain, no gain is really quite old school thinking. Um, and although you might be on that bike and you think I'm doing a high intensity interval session, then pain doesn't equate to gain. Uh, that adaptation... It's like you've been looking at my Strava, Jamie. <laughs> adaptation to training doesn't really work like that, Simon. There is, now don't get me wrong, there is a time and there is a place for doing high intensity sessions. And the return, of, the return that you get from that kind of work are usually very rapid. 
but they don't keep coming after a while and actually it might be counterproductive to do too much of it um you know there's more of a consensus in this area that the scientific literature would say that consistency week in week out progression is more important and fatigue and the cost of a session and putting yourself into a hole is not part of that we can be more clever than that your body likes variety a variety of training stimuli tends to produce better results than always doing the same thing where you would very quickly reach a plateau it's part of the reason why doing too much high intensity interval training can be counterproductive as well as it being quite fatiguing so do some lower intensity work as well it's not a waste of time it still gives you plenty of bang for your buck and don't just be a slave to intervals again use the tools that you have available to you connect to Zwift and ride up out the Zwift which is a fantastic use of training time or on the Watt bike app choose from any number of epic alpine climbs and have the bike replicate the gradient follow along and just enjoy the workout rather than drilling yourself mentally in fact, Professor Louis Passfield pointed us to some very interesting and seminal research by Hickson in 1977, who subjected participants to a gruelling 10-week training plan and saw improvements of up to 40%. But it was so gruelling that none of the participants would carry on the programme for more than that initial 10 weeks, which is a salutary lesson, I think. You might also find that if after a few weeks of really effective training, predominantly indoors, when you do get the chance to put in a couple of longer rides back to back outdoors, you will see really significant improvements. Not because it's better training, but because it's different. So perhaps look at your training in phases. You do high intensity for a bit, tempo for a few days, back to hit training, strength training perhaps, back to tempo, just keep it fresh. Now, before I go, a lot of you, I'm sure, are going to be wanting a bit more info about the Watt Bike Atom that I've been using. So let me fill you in. Watt Bike have been around since the year 2000, and they were founded basically on a principle of trying to get accurate data for cyclists from indoor training. And this, the Atom, is their latest and greatest. So its power meter is accurate to just plus or minus 1%. Your data is sampled a thousand times per second. And that is what allows you to get all those advanced metrics like pedaling effectiveness score and things like that. The bike is Bluetooth enabled. And so you've got a companion app that then lives on your phone or a tablet. And from there, you can see all of that data, control your workouts, follow along to sessions, things like that. But that Bluetooth connection also means, of course, that you can use third-party apps like Zwift. Now, I have got 22 gears on here, and when you scroll through them, the resistance varies electromagnetically, which also has an added bonus of being super quiet. And that is an absolute bonus for the time crunch cycle. It means that all you have to worry about is the noise of your ragged breathing waking your household up at stupid times of day, as opposed to your indoor bike. Well, I tell you what, I'm glad it's Hank's floor that I've been sweating all over today for a change. Now, what have we learned in this video then? Well, firstly, remember that frequency regularity consistency is absolutely key for the time crunch cyclist so try and work out what little short periods of time you can utilize that will allow you to get on your bike and train and remember make that transition from normality to training as easy as possible to make sure that you can do it then analyze your training use all the tech that you've got available to you to try and work out what training is effective for you do more of it and don't be afraid to experiment as well see what happens as long as you've got a record of it even if you find out what doesn't work that's not a bad thing and even if you work with a coach as well taking ownership of what you're doing is really really important and actually it means that you can buy in to the training you've been prescribed and that makes it even more effective i think and then lastly high intensity intervals super super effective but don't overuse them and remember as well, if you're already pretty fit, then actually they might not give you gains across the whole spectrum of fitness like they might do for other people. So again, use them sparingly and work out what it is in your training that is going to improve your fitness. Huge thanks to Jamie and to Wattbike as well for all their expertise in bringing you this video. Make sure you let us know in the comments if you've got any tips that you'd like to share with everyone else about how you get the most out of what time you do have available to train. I'm gonna go and do a day's work.